So the anti-Scientology wars continue with Mitch and Marilyn. I gave the general gist in the other video if you want quick recap of the whole outline. It's there, but I will have to just presume you know the basics. Basically, Marilyn feels that Mitch is too controlling. Mitch feels he's just trying to calm down the toxicity after the various Mike Rinder scandals. And his pro-Render opinion goes very, very far. Apparently he thinks that Render was 100% correct in his blog post, which, I gotta be honest, was really stupid and terrible. So, holding that 100% correct kind of opinion is uh, hard to sustain in my eyes, but that is Mitch's position. So, has Marilyn destroyed the Hollywood grifter that he is, allegedly? Well, there are two damning pieces of evidence. Technically three, but I will handle just two of them. Again, Marilyn is many things. I like her. I like her content. She's not exactly a great logician or, frankly, a good philosopher, so her arguments don't make a whole lot of sense. Nevertheless, I do think that Mitch is not being entirely truthful, and his whole pro-render spiel is, I think, kind of silly, and I don't understand why he thinks it's such a principled commitment, but we'll get to that. So, essentially, Marilyn brings forth two large pieces of evidence. One of them is kind of weird that he's, she's bringing that up, but apparently Mitch over his lifetime made eight million dollars in Hollywood. The, I guess, conclusion from that is that, well, he's not really a victim of the cult, right? What kind of victim of Scientology are you if you're a multimillionaire? So, we shouldn't feel too sorry for Mitch and where he is in this debate. Your laborer, and and it was it's quite nice not my taste but uh it was quite a quite a nice well i understand what marilyn is trying to do and as a polemical point it's very very powerful that mitch is coming from a very elite background now he does say at this point he is financially struggling he even faces potential homelessness again we have to be careful this is lifetime earnings it's not like oh he has eight million right now He's saying he had $8 million in the entire course of his life. Got to be careful how we're playing with the numbers. Nevertheless, I do think that is powerful, but it's not that powerful. It just goes to motive, saying, well, you can't be trusted because, again, your story isn't matching the others in terms of victimhood. I, I would agree this is pretty strong, but it doesn't complete the argument that he's not trustworthy. In fact, the additional evidence she tries to give is that, well, from his messages... Mike is trying to control her. And some places, okay, that seems valid. But then you look at some of these other messages. Well, what is Mitch doing? He's just giving you advice. He just says, I would advise you to do this. I would advise you to do that. And Marilyn is jumping to, I don't want you to advise me. That's controlling. That's OSA. Well, clearly she's not going to be controlled. You're leaking the messages. That's not what he wanted. So you weren't being controlled. So it's a little strange that she thought that this was some kind of elaborate psychological CIA brainwash operation. I'm like, I don't think that's what happened. I do agree, though, Mitch is not telling the whole truth. And the way he's trying to even frame the issue is very, very deceptive. Well, I know David Miscavige personally, and he did. He worked with David Miscavige creating propaganda. I don't think that gives you much credibility, actually. That makes you look like a terrible person. But there we are. So he helped make propaganda for David Miscavige. He even boasts that I never even had to call him sir. Because I thought it was weird to call him sir. So he knew Miscavige personally. And for him, Miscavige was running OSA. And Rinder was not running OSA. Well, I just have to say, this doesn't match my own research. It doesn't match the research of many other people. It could be in your one-to-one -one interactions. It felt like Miscavige was totally in control. But from what I know from others, no. Mike was in the room. He took the orders. That's definitely true. But to say he had no culpability is kind of strange. So both sides, I think, are frankly putting up weak positions and very, very biased narratives. Now, I am more on her side than on Mike's. I am more on her side than Mitch's side because, frankly, Render is a, well, he's a monster. So defending him, I think, is pretty stupid. However, I don't see what Marilyn is saying, that he's this controlling, mansplaining monster. It just seems that he's being deceptive, but then so are some of her friends. So 
we haven't really moved the argument. But still, yeah, the way that Mitch is proposing that he's the neutral party here, trying to calm down the toxicity seems frankly very silly.